Chambers of the Occult may contain content that might not be suitable for all listeners. Listener discretion is advised. I feel like every episode starts off with Alexis laughing. Anyway, yeah. it's not a bad laugh. I get, I get nervy. <laughs> Anyways, hi. <laughs> Who are you? I like to like the listeners. Yeah, no, no, I mean just in. <laughs> <just yourself. laughs> oh, who? Oh, uh, I'm Kai. Hey guys. <laughs> I'm Alexis, I guess. I'm yeah, Alexis. Yeah, yeah, I'm the yeah, man yeah. with no face, yeah. Jay. <gasps> no face. <laughs> now, I don't know why you're back and listening, but I'm <laughs> thankful that you're back and listening. I'm sure they are as yeah. well. Thanks for being yeah. here. Thank you. We made it Thank to you. three. Woohoo. Woo. <laughs> you are loved and you are cherished and you are our beautiful, beautiful listeners. Thank you for being here. Yes. Yeah, whatever he said. <laughs> okay now for this week i have one story like always okay <laughs> i don't Whoa. know why that would be different not two mm. no mm. we haven't gotten there yet they're not short enough to have two. <laughs> yeah. okay uh for this one i'm gonna start off with true crime i doubt it myself just... yes it's true crime <laughs> yes <laughs> um Paranormal gang, where you at? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh my god. Um, um, so, how last episode I had a story that was over the pond. Um, this one's still <laughs> over the pond. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's in Spain. This time we're going to oh. go to España. Nice. Oh my gosh. Yes. And time frame, I forgot last story's time frame but this time we're going to the 1970s 1980s okay okay so this is the story of the boy painter of malaga or in spanish because they speak spanish there el niño pintor de malaga i had to do a lot of translating for this story which was fine Um, and it was kind of nice knowing that i could pull that information in its natural like language and then translate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, who is this boy painter? You might be wondering. Uh, not know. for long. <laughs> <laughs> so his name is David Guerrero Guevara. Okay. 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 Uh, he was born in October nineteenth, nineteen seventy four. Under the sign of mm-hmm. Libra, if that's important oh my god, to you wait. or not. Oh my, oh my god. My mom was born in 1974. Go on. Wait, was she? Yeah, she was born June 1st, 1974. My dad was born August 26, 1968. What? Okay. Whoa. Okay. 1974. So just keep... Like, so that's when he was born. Yeah, um, yeah, He yeah. was born in Malaga, Spain. Now, just as a point of reference, Malaga, Spain, it's the sixth largest city in Spain. At least when I looked it okay. up, that's what it told me. Um, <laughs> and there's approximately 593,000 people living there. Now, okay. we, they're just numbers and we're like, is that a lot? Is that a little? Um, uh, Malaga, Spain is about the size of uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee has 604,000 people. Um, and then Detroit, Michigan is also pretty close. It has 604,000 people. Okay. okay. So it's a big city. Yeah. Now, David, like all kids, he had parents. 
<laughs> we, we can we can debate the ethics of that later but yeah yeah um, <laughs> um so his dad is named antonio uh, guerrero um and he was a clothing ta- uh, he worked at a clothing tailoring shop workshop um his mom was named antonia uh, guevara guevara my bad i'm okay. messing that last name um and she was just a housewife and I heard their last name so often that I feel so bad that I'm missing it up. Um, but Antonio was a housewife. Now, he was born in 1974, and now we're going to jump to the year 1987. Okay. Alexis, do you want to do some math? How old was he? Uh, oh. No. <laughs> uh, 1987 and he was born in 1984. Nine, eight, 14. Yeah. 13. He hasn't turned 14 13? yet, but you're, you're, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So David, David, David was in middle school. He David. was, um, I'm going to call him David because that's his name. I mm, could say yeah. David, yeah. but I just want to keep the name as David. Um, yeah. He was in, he was a middle child of three. Um, he was 13 years old at the time and he had two brothers. His older brother was named George, uh, Jorge. Uh, he was 15 years old. And his youngest brother <laughs> was named Raul. He was 10 years old. Now, David and Raul, um, the, David is the middle child. Raul is the youngest child. They both like to paint. They like to paint and draw. Um, and their house was full of the drawings. Um, the difference was that David, um, he had a talent for painting and he would often take extracurricular curricular classes in school for painting uh, with a few of his school friends. Uh, but in addition to that, he would also attend a uh, Academy of Art um, where he where the majority of the students were adults. Um, he was just at a different level when it came to painting. Um, but also his teacher for the Academy of Arts was related to David. It was um, David's uh, first cousin once removed. Um, and he was a professional painter. So he was the one teaching classes and teaching David. Okay, Picasso. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> did you know about that? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, I do mention Picasso just very slightly um, because by the age of 13 this year, um, he was kind of like an up and coming artist. Um, he wasn't technically famous at the time. But there was talking around uh, the city of Malaga of a young boy who had talent uh, comparable to Picasso. <laughs> no, Alexis wasn't far nice. off. <clears throat> I wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then David um, Guerrero Gara, uh, Guevara's, uh, he had an art exhibition that was scheduled to be part of an Easter exhibition um, at Galeria La Casa, which is just gallery of the house um or house of the gallery um <laughs> but that was going to be on april 6 1987 but three okay. days before that um there was the opening the opening was three days before what am i saying this is where <laughs> some of the information i wasn't sure what i was hearing and what i was picking up um because mm-hmm. i one of the locations one of the things i heard is that on april 6 uh, it was the official opening, but on April 3rd, it was a soft opening for family and friends. Mm. Okay. Either way, it was open for some people on the 3rd and everyone on the 6th, or everyone on the 3rd as well. But on April 3rd, um, David and his family went to the opening, and there was a journalist that asked um, David if he could show up on the 6th, on April 6th, for an interview, because David was the only kid who had work on display because the ex the Easter exhibition only had like adults uh-huh. uh, art from adult and David being the only child 13. Um, his skill was good enough that they're like, Hey, let's put this work up there with everyone else. Sick. Yeah. So he was really good at painting. I have some pictures of his to show you some of his, some of his artwork to show you later on. I'll drop the link for that when we get to those parts. Now, Okay. It was on April 6th that David came home from school and he had a light snack. He had like a yogurt and Antonia, uh, David's mom, 
um, told his dad, uh, told David that his dad was going to pick him up at 9 p.m. after the exhibition. So mm -hmm. okay. he would go to the gallery and he would get picked up by his dad. Now, mm -hmm. um, David painted multiple things. Um, so he he had like a variety of things he painted. He painted things like Hollywood actors. Um, he had oh, okay. a oh, cool. painting of, yeah, he had a painting of Silver, uh, Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester <laughs> Stallone? Okay. Yeah. I love that. Uh, he I also did uh, reinterpretations of classic art pieces. And then Ooh, he would okay. also do family portraits and self-portraits. Oh, cute. You're, I'm also going to give you the link to the self-portrait that he did. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, he also liked to draw uh, like caricature portraits. Mm -hmm. And then he would also draw religious religious pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and that was one of the pieces that was put on display at the exhibition because it was, you know, like an Easter exhibition. He painted a picture of Christ. They liked it. And they're like, we're going to put it on display. Yeah. So his other work was also good, but this is what made him stood out, at least for that exhibition. Now, the picture that he drew, it's you know, the the Christ of the Good Death, or in Spanish, because that's how it said, El Cristo de la Buena Muerte. Um, <clears throat> so that's what was on display. That's what he people were going to go see, along with everything else. It wasn't just like one piece. Um, yeah. But Antonia sees uh, David leave the house around 6.30 in the afternoon. Um, and he leaves with no money, only a backpack that has art supplies in it, and the bus pass. Now, the bus wasn't okay. too far from the house. It was just about like 200 meters walking from the house. So, oh, so yeah, not far. Yeah. No. Um, and she normally would see him walk out of the house into the uh, bus stop. Well, he would have to make a turn to get to the bus stop, but she saw him walk away until like she couldn't see him anymore. Um, and as he was walking away, um, well, we'll talk about that later in a minute. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I was going to say, well, uh, David normally takes the bus to school. Um, it's not his normal route to go to the gallery. So his dad actually drew him a map so he would know where to get off. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good on his dad. It's yeah. Nice. I mean, this is also before phones and all that stuff. So it's like, here is a map yeah. of where you have to get yeah. off. Um, so once map he got on the quest. bus, yeah, do you have a question? Oh, no, I was just, I, I was saying map quest. I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like this little map thing my grandparents used to use. <laughs> <laughs> Directions. Yeah. Um, so once he got off the bus at the stop that the dad told him, it would be about a 15 minute walk to the gallery. So not too far. Yeah. Um. Now, you remember how I told you that April 6th was the day that he had the interview? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, there was something else happening on April 6th. Um, it was a really important date for yeah, Malaga, it was. but mm -hmm. it wasn't important because of the gallery exhibition, um, but mm -hmm. rather because Queen Sophia was in Malaga oh. on April 6th. Yeah, so uh, Queen Sophia is the, was at the time she was the Queen of Spain. Mm -hmm. And she was in town to for the inauguration of the Cervantes Theater. And oh. the, Acad the, the academy that Dave attended was about a four-minute walk from the theater that was being inaugurated for, by the Queen. Okay. okay. So it's already a big city, but because the Queen's in town, there's going to be more people it's, than usual. Yeah, like it's crazy yeah. busy. Yeah, and especially because he's only a four-minute walk away from the theater. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to know more a little bit more about Queen Sophia because we hear a lot of you know England's royals. Oh yeah, I'm like sure. oh yeah, queens uh, of Spain. So um, I'll try to sum it up shorter because you know we don't really get talk more about her or see her or anything of that sort. She doesn't get involved. It, it was just the day she was there. Okay, but uh, Princess Sophia. Uh, she was born as Princess Sophia of Greece and Denmark, um, and she was the wife of King Juan Carlos, <laughs> the first of Spain. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And she's the queen of two places. That's Yeah. Princess. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Or princess. Yeah. But yeah. that's cool. <laughs> Impressive. 
Yeah. Yeah. So、um, she actually studied childcare, music, and archaeology in Athens. Damn. Okay, Queen. So it's kind of where I'm like, whoa. I was like, like, I don't know. I wouldn't mind being like a royal and studying that no, stuff. Oh、no, yeah. <laughs> Send me to Athens. I'll go study. <laughs>、um, and then she <laughs> married Queen、uh, King Carlos,、uh, Juan Carlos of Spain, and they have、oh, they had three children: Elena,、uh, Cristina, and Felipe. That makes、nice. solid names. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Felipe is the current king of Spain at the time. Okay. Oh, that's、yeah. cool. So、uh, Queen Sofia, she was quite involved in various charitable activities, and she represents the Spanish royal family in numerous in numerous ceremonial and state functions.、Uh, her role was so her role has significantly influenced the image and activities of the、uh, of the Spanish monarchy. So you know, like every other、oh. queen, it's like let's make、yeah. the Spanish good. I mean, actually, whatever country she's from, yeah.、Um, But that's all. She doesn't actually have a little,、um, what do you call it? When like guest celebrities pop here and there, she doesn't have like a、mm. little. Here I am. She doesn't get involved in the case. It was just the day that she was in town that this happened. Yeah. Okay. So、uh, Antonio,、uh, which is David's dad, he went to pick up David、um, that evening at nine p.m. But Antonio didn't see David leave the academy. So he thought that he might have walked to the gallery because they're just so close to each other.、Um, so Antonio goes to see. Yeah. But because the interview was supposed to take place at the gallery, Antonio looks around. He asks at the gallery if someone saw him,、um, and no one saw him. So he. So then David assumed that Antonio assumed that David must have walked back. Back home, fair. With, yeah, which was actually kind of strange because if he was to walk back home, it would have been the first time he walked back to the house. He never really、oh. walked back home from the center. He would always get picked up.、Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Antonio just thinks he's not at the academy. He might be at the gallery because that's where he works at. It's real close by. He goes there. David's not there. So then Antonio decides to drive back home. So Antonio comes home,、uh, and when he enters the house, it's a very like Spanish, Mex- Latino, Hispanic thing because he walks in the house, and I saw like a interview with the mom and like some people, and the mom said、yeah. that when Antonio walks in, he goes "y el niño," which basically means "and the kid,"、mm-hmm. but it's more of like "where's the kid?"、Um, yeah, and she responds with the same thing. She's like "where's the kid."、Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so this was in 1987、uh, when phones were still kind of like a science fiction machine.、Um, <laughs> so Antonio just quickly makes his way to the police station to file a missing persons、yeah. report. Yeah.、Uh, and of course, because it hasn't been 24 hours,、mm-hmm. they told him to come back tomorrow. Yeah. Which can, you can. Yeah, I was just、imagine. about to say, like, he went immediately. The police aren't going to do anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a different year. But apparently, it was still it still had to be twenty four hours in nineteen eighty seven. Okay. I must be and, so scary as a parent. Anyways, yeah, I mean,、fun. yeah. I feel like every single incident, you don't see him come out of the academy. Your heart drops a little, and you're like, "Wait!" But the exhibitions、yeah. nearby shows up, not there. Comes home, worst year comes true, he's not here. Ah, cops. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Just try to sum it up. <laughs> yeah.、Um, so because they told him that it hadn't been 24 hours and that he had to come back tomorrow, he came back home, and it、mm-hmm. was with the help of the neighbors that Antonio and the neighbors started to look for him.、Okay. Um, now I wasn't sure if Antonio,、uh, the mom, and the brothers also searched for him. All I could find was that the dad and the neighbors were looking for Antonio. I'm sure that the mom did as well, but I couldn't find that、yeah. written anywhere.、Mm-hmm. Yeah.、Um, But they had no luck, so the next day the police got involved. Okay. Now the, the first thing that the yeah, so the first thing that I mean they took it serious. They're like, okay, it's been twenty four hours. Let's start a search for this kid. Um, and the police interviewed the bus drivers that were <clears throat> from the day before that might have seen David.、Uh-huh. Um, but none of the bus drivers remember、uh, seeing David get in the bus, which let the 
uh, police to the conclusion that David never took the bus and that he never yeah. made it to the interview. So, like I mentioned, oh, Queen's... Go been... ahead. <laughs> no, I know, I know you're getting there, but I'm like... Yeah, yeah. Uh, am I getting there? You'll find out. <laughs> no, please. Uh, and that is it. No. <laughs> um, back next time for part two. <laughs> um, but since that day was when Queen Sophia was in town, like I mentioned, there was more police than usual. There were more mm-hmm. people than usual. And because David was a 13-year-old kid, uh, the police kind of discarded the fact that he could have been kidnapped. Because... A 13-year-old would try to put up a fight. Yeah. And with so many people and, and police around, someone would have noticed. So real quick, the theory that he was kidnapped, the police discard that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a couple of days go by and no one calls the family for a ransom. Or like the cops for a ransom, yeah. no letter, nothing. Mm-hmm. So they're starting to think that it's it's not some like it's not like they want money, like what happened. Um, one of the theories is that David might have run away um, or that he was perhaps kidnapped for his talent. Oh. Now, yeah. So that's kind of why people, why it became like a f- well-known case because, you know, he was a artist on the rise. Um, he could have been real famous if he continued doing the work. Um, but they said that the theory that he was kidnapped for his talent is because they said he they would kidnap him to make art fakes in the black market. Oh. Black yeah, market? Uh, yeah, I mean, people would sell fake art on the black market. Yeah. I mean, I think they still kind of do. I, I don't do I mean, that like, yeah, no, like, but the I've money. Never, I've never thought of fake art being made and sold on the black market, but, but it makes so much yeah. sense. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't sell it as fake art. You would probably try to yeah, sell, yeah, it, yeah, sell yeah. it as a well, genuine thing. Yeah. Um, but well, this theory is the most popular at the time. I mean, given that people just wanted to make sure that David was alive and unwell, it's yeah. unfortunately unlikely. Um, there's a few holes, but because he does have talent, um, they would probably kidnap him, but he still has a lot to learn and grow. Yeah. So that's why it might have been the most popular, but with time, they're like, it's not really plausible just because he's so young and his he still has a lot to learn. He's good mm-hmm. and he'll get better, but we don't know. Now, they start interviewing lots of people and this is when we start getting a little bit into the witnesses. So, uh, one witness came forward. Uh, this was a woman and she said that she saw David in the train uh, next to a well-dressed man, but there was no evidence of that. So, okay. The woman, you know, she said, I was in a train. Yep. I think he was in the train standing next to a well-dressed man. Could have been him. Maybe it wasn't. There's yeah, just there's no, no that proof. doesn't lead anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, like I said, this was, however, uh, this, however, led the cops to start investigating uh, the adults in David's life who thought that he might have run away or willingly or that he was tricked into running away. Mm-hmm. Now, during this whole time, they interview, of course, family, neighbors, um, classmates, and then one of his class friends from his art class in school. Um, her name's uh, Hema. Hema? Hema. Uh, she, co- uh, mm-hmm. she comes forward with a drawing that David gave her. And the drawing was given to her a few days before he disappeared. Um, and a few days... No, the yeah, a few days before he disappeared, before his work was put uh-huh. in the gallery, um, and it's because all his school friends wanted to get some sort of artwork from David and get it signed yeah. by him. That or when sense. he became famous, they would have something. Yeah. You know, it's just something kids and even yeah, it's cute. you know grown ups would do. It's like, hey, give me some of your work before you're famous. Yeah. Um, now at the time, uh, David's painting was estimated to be about sixteen thousand pesetas, which is what they used at the time because the mm-hmm. euro was the thing, um, and that was an an estimated one thousand uh, one thousand and forty one dollars. Okay. Yeah, but mm-hmm. as the search continued, uh, the value went up four times to an estimated four thousand one hundred sixty four dollars. Quadrupled. Yeah. What? Now, keep in mind, this is a 
13 year old kid. Yeah. That had a painting worth a thousand dollars. And when That's he went crazy. missing, the painting multiplied by four. But like why why kidnap a kid? You know? Like, he's just he's just yeah. a baby. I don't know. It's it's really what they're trying to find out, and it's just yeah. not making sense to anyone. <clears throat> um, I just sent the link to the picture of him and also the picture of his work that was on display. Okay. okay. And this was like hand painted. Like me at my age, Damn. I could not paint that. Whoa, no. <laughs> that is insane. Yeah. So this is the That's talent so that good. this 13-year-old kid had. The, yeah. Um, so the friends really were good. right. You know, his work was going to go up in value and, that, and, you know, they were right to get that stuff from him. Mm-hmm. Now, the drawing that game, uh, the David gave to Hema, Gemma, Hema, uh, was the most recent mm-hmm. one, was one of the, his most recent drawings. Um, and it was a drawing of a man. Now, okay. she didn't know who the man was. And when uh, Hema asked David who the man was, he just didn't answer. Interesting. Yeah. Now, in the painting, the painting academy is located in a building of a cultural and flamenco club mm-hmm. called El Sanchero. Kind of fun place. Yeah, so, you know, there was all sorts of things happening there, dancing and art and other things. Um, And that's where he interacted with the adults. Um, But also, um, he interacted with adults that were kind of on the higher class, like elegant people, people with money, Mm -hmm. and, like, well-connected. And from that academy, it's only a four-minute walk to the Cervantes Theater. Yeah. Yeah. but once again, the cops didn't find anything um, that they at least reported to the public during those. T- and at that time, they couldn't find anything at the academy as well. Now, let's talk a little bit more about Antonia, David's mom, during that whole time. Okay. Because, of course, any parent that loses a child, uh, she wasn't able to sleep. Um, and she did something very sweet that was just kind of leave the light in the porch turned on in case he came back. Yeah. Of of course, you're going to do anything. Yeah. Yeah. um, I was going to bring it up later, but this is a good point, a good time to bring. Because whenever, like, reporters would interview her about David, his story, um, she would always ask them when the story would get published. And they would Mm -hmm. always say, oh, next week. And she would respond, oh, well, by next week, he'll already be home. She was just hopeful that he would be back. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And during that time, Antonio, the dad, he would go to the police station daily. He would go every single day. He would ask them for updates. But unfortunately, days turned to weeks and weeks turned to months. Mm-hmm. Now, from April, we're going to jump to October 19th, uh, which was David's birthday. Uh, yeah. His 14th birthday, and of course, there was no news of him. October 19th, you said? Yeah, October 19th is, was his birthday. That's my mom's birthday. Is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Alexis's mom was born in that year, and your mom was born in that day. Yeah. And my- oh, that's cool. Wow. I feel like you should tell your mom, Alexis, that... Well, no. I was going to be like, tell her that... I- Kid went missing that day. No, but he didn't go missing that day. He was just born the same day as your mom did. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. kid that went missing was born on the same day. Of yeah, you. yeah. <laughs> um. Now, unfortunately, the case would kind of stop grabbing the people's attention on mm. November 9th, just a month after his birthday, um, because less than sixty-two miles from where. David lived. Um, Hooded and armed men intercepted a car and kidnapped a five-year-old um, who her brother mm. was taking to school. Okay. And her name is Melody Nakachong. 
Um, she was the daughter of Raymond Nakachan, a multimillionaire. So, of course, oh. because the daughter yeah. of a multimillionaire gets kidnapped by hooded figures that, is, you know, that yeah. stuff are. Yeah. The news starts to cover that case. It kind of takes over over the beats. And we can cover this case in the future. It's an interesting case as well. I don't want to give too much of that case away. Okay. Um, so <laughs> back in December, it's when David starts grabbing more attention again. So it was on December 6th that a search party for David starts. Um, and it just makes me so like upset because during that whole search party, um, Antonia ends up fainting from just the exhaustion. No. She was just exhausted and the mental fatigue as well. Yeah, of course. At that point, yeah. it's been months. Um, and this really is where it got me. And like, ah, I got so teary when I was just hearing this. Um, nine months after his disappearance, um, Raul, um, the younger brother, um, mm -hmm. he wrote a letter and he read it on the radio. Um, and I'll read it in Spanish and I'll translate it to English just because I want to give it that, like, oomph of how I felt. Okay. Um, yeah. And it just says, Hermano David, ya hace nueve meses que saliste de la casa y nadie más ni nosotros, y, na y nada más ni nosotros ni nadie supo de ti. Nueve meses más aquel seis de abril desapareciste. Estas navidades tu ausencia se hace mucho más grande y dolorosa. Si me estás oyendo, David, que sepas que te hablo por Malaga, tu hermano, tu amigo y compañero en esta pasión tuya y la mía de la pintura. Mamá ya no tiene lágrimas para llorar. Papá llora adentro como los hombres. Nuestro hermano Jorge igualmente vive en la esperanza, esperanza de tu regreso. Vuelve, da señales de vida. Vuelve para hacernos la Navidad más feliz del mundo. I already got teared eye reading that. Ah! No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, so. <clears throat> this, so keep in mind, um, Raul, the youngest brother, he's, he was 10 at the time that he got kidnapped. And at this point, he's 11. So this is an 11 year old who wrote a letter and is reading it out loud, you know, in the radio for his brother. Yeah. And the letter goes, Brother David, it's been nine months since you left home, and neither we nor anyone else knew about you. Nine months plus that April 6th when you disappeared. This Christmas, your absence becomes much greater and more painful. If you're listening to me, David, please know that I am speaking to you from Malaga, your brother, your friend, and partner in your and your and my passion for painting. Oh. Mom doesn't have tears to cry anymore. Dad cries from the inside like men. Our brother George also lives on hope. Hope in your return. Return. Show signs of life. Return to give us the happiest Christmas in the world. Oh. Okay. Uh, That's so sad. You know. And unfortunately, there's no response whatsoever. Yeah. And the first year of David's disappearance comes to an end with no significant leads. Now, um, it was, I know, it just killed the family so much. Just not yeah. having anything. Just the whole year. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, the mom kept tearing up in the inside, the dad as well, everyone, everyone. Mm -hmm. It was towards the end of 1988 that the police um, got a lead. Um, so the police follow, followed a lead to Portugal, where they say David had been seen painting on the streets of uh, Lisbon, Portugal, with kids around his age. Oh. Okay. So they... They either go or they reach out to the police there and they go investigate um, and they're able to locate them. But it's not David. Oh. And... Now, this unfortunately would only be one of many false sightings of David. Mm -hmm. um, until a woman 
who works in a hotel named Los Naranjos, which translates to the oranges, um, in Malaga. <laughs> he tells her friend. Uh, so this woman works in a hotel and she tells a friend who's married to a cop that she saw something suspicious related to David um, the day that he went missing. Mm -hmm. and she tells her husband uh, her her friend tells her husband and the husband's able to convince the lady that worked in the hotel to give a statement okay so she goes to give a statement but she said that she didn't speak up right away as to not damage the hotel's reputation weird Which, it's yeah. weird because I'm like I do feel like someone should speak up right away but I also mm -hmm. don't know the financial like situation she was in I, yeah i guess so so it could go either way um plus maybe she didn't think anything of it until later on but mm. what she ends up telling them is that she, she 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 retells the story that a uh swiss uh, that in a swiss in a swiss man's room she found a napkin with the name david guerrero guevara written on it and it also oh. had the name of the street that he lived in. That's creepy. Yeah. So mm -hmm. she actually found that in written in a in a napkin the day that David went missing. That's really creepy. Yeah. Yeah. So this man from Switzerland, he he's in town for some reason. He writes his name down. He writes the address. Yeah. And she ends up um, just leaving. And the maid comes in and she sees it. She doesn't think much of it because he hasn't gone missing by then. Yeah. Yeah. At that point, there's really nothing yeah. too odd about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it was the next day that she found a napkin in the trash can. Um, but also the Swiss man had already checked out of the hotel. Mm -hmm. So the police are looking around. They're talking to people and they're able to identify the Swiss man. So. Uh, the Swiss Ooh. man, he's over 70 years old, and his name is Rudolf. <laughs> I can't pronounce his last name, so I'm not going to say <laughs> it. <laughs> his name is Rudolf, um, and he was actually a photographer. Okay. However, um, this they found him after he had passed away. Uh, he passed away in January oh. of 1990. So a few years after this disappearance, yeah. but once the cops get involved, find him, he had already passed away. Yeah. Um, he passed away before the police could actually identify him. So they were able to, you know, figure a few things from Rudolph. Um, first of all, he was divorced. Um, and they decided to talk to the wife, to the ex-wife. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess widow or ex-widow, however, I don't know. <laughs> um, oh, and yeah. She... She still had a lot of his, uh, she had his, his photography studio um, mm -hmm. in her home and her, his picture archives. Mm -hmm. So while they were going through that, they realized that Rudolph liked taking pictures of kids. Not weird at all. Yeah. But you can take a, you can relax because none of the pictures have any pedophile content. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, um, in yeah, a future it a little, interview, a little better. Yeah, no. In a future interview, um, they talked to his son, Rudolf's son, son, mm -hmm. um, and he said that his father liked taking pictures of kids because, unlike adults, kid, kids walked with no care, and it was a lot more natural um, for the kids to just walk around not caring and more candid than adults okay. walking. I guess that's sweet. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I, I was like, I just wanted to, because that they made that a very clear point. It's like there was no pedophile content; it was just pictures of kids walking. And then years later, when they interviewed the son, the son said, "Hey, he actually just he like we questioned why he also took pictures of kids, and he told us that mm -hmm. he took pictures because they're a lot more natural walking around compared to adults that are you know more aware of their posture and things like that." So he kind of just wanted. I to guess it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> now they start doing more digging around, of course, because this is the only lead they have. It's actually somewhat connected. Um, mm -hmm. And they found out that Rudolf uh, spent lots of time in Malaga, where he bought himself a home. Okay. Now the media, of course, did some digging around. 
Um, and the media mentioned that Rudolf had a boat tied to the dock. Uh, Malaga's in the south of Spain, like right next to the sea. So he had a boat there. Um, mm-hmm. the media ended up covering that he left uh, for Morocco the day after David went missing. Oh, oh interesting timing. Yeah. So it <laughs> once that's what I was going to say. I don't know if there was something behind it or not. Um, but the investigators start to believe that Rudolf was the man that David had drawn, had um, had drawn, and given the drawing to Hema. Mm-hmm. So the police uh, tries to get records of Rudolf's property in Morocco, um, but they're unsuccessful just because Morocco's like, "Hey, we're we're not going to give you this." It's like you need more evidence than that before we give you someone's yeah information. Yeah, um, another theory was that. Uh, they did consider that maybe uh, Rudolph simply just helped da- uh, David run away. Um, but the parents are very adamant that there would be no reason for David to go to run away. Mm-hmm. There was no mm-hmm. signs of that as well. So that's yeah. why for the family to swallow the fact that he willingly chose to run away. Yeah. And that's when people start to speculate that, you know, if he ran away and Rudolph helped him, um, maybe he went to Switzerland. But of course, okay. the parents just continue denying it because it's like, no, like, why would he run away? Like, he had a good life. He had f- friends, family, art classes, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Maybe so, it was so much pressure on him or something. But... That? I didn't mm-hmm. even think of that. It could have been pressure. You're right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he was nervous the day that he walked out of the door. Um, his mom could tell. But the theory was that he was nervous because he was having an interview. Yeah, I was, then that's like valid, like yeah. nervousness. Yeah. That's why the parents didn't think much of him being nervous because they knew yeah. he was to do his first interview on his first market yeah. played out somewhere. Mm-hmm. Now, it would be, where am I? Okay. So, unfortunately, they can't figure anything more out. They can't connect more dots, no more evidence. Um, now we're going to jump to 19, 1996, which is nine years after his disappearance. Wow. Um, oh, it's the, been a while. Yeah, the case just goes cold um, and the case is archived. It's not closed. It's just archived. Now, during okay. this whole time, Raul's youngest brother, he became a teacher in London. And interesting choice, but cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, something like there. He was 10 years old or 11 when his brother went missing. He had some growing up and discovering to do as well. That's true. Very true. Um, and he was a few years after in 2015 that uh, David's dad, Antonio Guerrero, um, mm-hmm. he didn't answer without knowledge of his missing son. Oh. oh. So the dad just passed away and never got to know what happened to his son. That's so sad. Like, I don't know. I, honestly, yeah, probably like the last thing I would ever think about is just like, where, where's my son? Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, you have cancer, you're dying in bed and then you can only think of your son. I would imagine. Yeah. Now, it was, I got the year here. Yeah, it was after Antonio passed away that the family um, acknowledged that their son, not acknowledged, like that he was legally declared dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the reason they did that was because um, the will was blocked for almost a year because the signature of all the heirs was needed. And because oh. David was not legally dead, yeah, no one could get any of They the still will. needed his signature. Yeah, so yeah. that's when they said that he died, and legally you would be able to. I, this were the laws of Spain at the time. I don't know if they've changed or if they mm-hmm. applied to the states, but at least in Spain at the time, um, David was legally declared dead on April 6, 1997, which was just 10 years after his disappearance. Wow. Yeah, so after 10 years, you would you would be able to legally declare them dead if no body was found. Uh-huh. Um, 
Now, the family never really gave up hope. Uh, the family, um, the family's DNA is stored in a missing persons database in case there's ever any remains that need to be identified. Yeah. So they really did everything they could. They're like, you know what? Um, here's their DNA. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. But here it is. Yeah. Let's see. Um, and it was, it doesn't end there because in 2018, which is actually quite recent, yes. uh, <laughs> the wow, brother, actually. yeah, the brothers decide uh, to have an exhibition showing all, all of uh, the beats art. Yeah. That's really kinda cute. Like, yeah, kind of like an, you know, an art gallery in memory of her brother. Mm -hmm. um, this was 31 years after his disappearance. So at this point, David would have been around 34 years old. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. There's mm, so many years that there's no knowledge whatsoever. Um, however, the exhibition, while it, it's, it's sweet and it's nice, it's kind of interesting because the brothers decided to only portray um, David as only done like religious artwork. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like none of the other artwork was displayed in the exposition. There was none of his uh, car caricatures. Okay. There was none of the celebrities. There was none of the oh. self portraits. It was just his religious work. Wonder why that is. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't really find it, anyone talking about why it was just that, but that's the only yeah. thing that was on the this you know out there for people to see now um at the exhibition there was a reporter named um george and he talked to daniel daniel is the oldest brother okay wait no sorry the reporter is named daniel george is the oldest brother <laughs> okay got it <laughs> and as they're just talking because you know he's interviewing him in the artwork and all that stuff and his brother um the oldest brother and the reporter uh, start an investigation of their own. Oh, oh, they did their own like detective work on this. Yeah. yeah. And what do you know? <laughs> that the first thing they find out is that contrary to the accounts, there are actually records of people seeing David in the bus stop the day he went missing. Oh. What? Yeah. Like this is what like throws a wrench in the whole thing because. For, you know, 31 years, people were like, he never got in the bus. But as soon as the brother and the reporter start to find out, they find out that there's eyewitness testimonies that David was at the bus stop the day he went missing. Where did these all come from? They found um, like a news, like published article on the 8th uh, of April, which was two days after David went missing. Um, the reporter and George uh, George try to talk to uh, the people that saw David that morning. And mm -hmm. one of the men, uh, they knew David from around the block. And he said that he saw David standing at the bus stop because there was uh, not at the bus that he saw David standing in the bus because there wasn't any seats available because it was just so crowded. Oh, so he, had yeah. to stand yeah. so he saw David in the bus and standing rather than, like you know, sitting right. Um, so it was like clear, you know, yeah. for him to tell. Yeah, it was, you know, I mean, the queen was in town, the bus was going to be packed, but he saw that David was in the bus in a packed bus standing. Hmm. Now, um, there's also a painter. His name is Rafael Jaime Calderon. He was the substitute <laughs> teacher for uh, David's regular teacher. So for his okay. cousin twice removed, if I'm correct. Um, he also said that David made it to the location of the interview. Oh. He, he did. So he did go yeah. to the interview. So, no, he didn't go to or, the interview. He made it to the location, location of, of the interview. Yeah. So he made it to the location of the interview, but he showed up late and the journal journalist had already left after waiting for the, David for a while. But David David did arrive to the location of the interview. He just didn't make it to the actual interview. Wow. What? <sighs> that just makes it so much more confusing. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it turns out that the reason that, you know, this didn't get out to public was because the cops were asking the wrong questions. They uh-huh. interviewed, they, the cops got to talk to the, uh, to the journalist that was waiting for, um, David, but the journalist just said that David never showed up. But there were other people in the area, like the substitute teacher that he was just there painting, that he saw the journalist leave and then David arrived after he left. So the journalist never knew that David showed up late. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. And the substitute teacher, Raphael, um, he had a brief conversation with David. He got to talk to him during that, that same day. What? That he was yeah. Um, and the, and the substitute teacher, Raphael, just told uh, David to go to the academy and that he would see him there. He was just going to, Raphael was just going to wrap up the painting that he was doing and then go head to the academy. And and why did none of this ever come up sooner? Because I don't know. Like, I don't know <laughs> the, that the cops were asking, but they were not the right ones. Yeah, yeah. Because they were like, did he show up to the interview? They should have asked the people around that area. It's like, did you ever see him show up? He could have shown up early. He could have shown up late. Turns out he showed mm-hmm. up late. You know, according oh, to yeah, his yeah. teacher. Um, and oh, Raphael remembers uh, that it was that day very clearly because it was the day that he sold one of his paintings, but they couldn't pay him because they didn't oh. have enough funds. So this, so he would come back the next day. And it turns mm-hmm. out that the substitute teacher Raphael did tell the cops twice that he saw David. He he told the <laughs> cops twice. That's like, yeah, I did see him. What the hell? Yeah. So So now who do you trust? I know, because as soon like as the brother and um you know that reporter start working together, like they're digging all this stuff up. Uh Uh, Turns out that there's also other witnesses that they say they saw David walk into the building of the academy. (laughs) What is going on? Yeah, I know. (laughs) (laughs) Just when you're thinking they're like, oh, you know, it's it's not never solved. The brother gets involved, and like all this information is coming to light. Yeah. Uh, the original witness um, that said that they saw what they, uh, David walk into the academy had unfortunately passed away at the time that Daniel, the reporter, and George, the brother, start their own investigation. Yeah. Um, but their daughter Maria recalled that her father was very adamant that he made it to the building. You know, because people kept saying that, oh, he went missing. He never made it to the bus stop. But he's like, no, like yeah. I saw him walk into the building. Um, and the mom, the mom of Maria, even stated that she also saw that he'd go up the stairs. Bro, this is so yeah. So the, so, so many different like eyewitness yeah. accounts. And stuff. Yeah, which unfortunately, it's one of the less reliable. Evidence. Oh, 100%. Especially yeah. when you're asking people like 31 years after he went missing. No, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, I would want to take this evidence, but like there's a grain of salt because eyewitness testimony, it's the least reliable source of evidence. Mm-hmm. Now, the way that the Academy was laid out was that the art section was on the second floor. Uh, and the bottom, the first floor was like the, the flamenco, the dance section. So the mom, um, of Maria, she stated that she saw that we'd go up those stairs, you know, to like the classroom section and all that stuff. So there's a theory that since the academy was located on the second floor of the building and the cultural and flamenco club in the, in the flamenco club building, um, the theory is that David could have bumped into someone on the way up the stairs. Mm-hmm. But David never made her up to the second floor. Oh. So there's a theory oh. that maybe something happened to him on the way up the stairs. And he was never seen again. Literally. Oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and, you know, Daniel, he's the reporter. He did more digging around and he tried to obtain records from the police station. Uh-huh. Um, but it was denied because it wasn't a close case. It was archived. Oh. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. Um, however, uh, the judicial records were still available. Oh. So they went to ask for them. Um, but 
They told them that the records had been destroyed because once oh. they're digitalized, they're able to destroy the physical ones. <sighs> now, that's kind of confusing because I'm not sure why they weren't able to give them a copy of the records being digitalized. Yeah. Oh, true. Um, but it was towards the end of 2018 that the judicial secretary uh, gave George the physical records that were not actually destroyed. What? <laughs> Why did it take so long? I don't know if they're like, oh shit, like we destroyed them, tell them we destroyed them because they couldn't find them or if they found them later or there was something yeah. else covering yeah. up. Um, but this is where it starts getting more... Ah! Okay. So during this <laughs> time, the mom, Antonia, she received a letter that said that in order to solve the disappearance, they had to look for, what's his name? Garabasio. And ask the cl and ask at the club. El Sanchero, which is where he <laughs> attended the academy. So people start digging around. The mom gets the letter, look for this person that, you know, at, at and they ask, ask people, yeah. they're able to find six people, six people who are, who remember uh, Garbasio. Now, someone close to the president of the club, um, he was someone close to the president of the club, uh, but he ended up moving out of Magalia, Malaga. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. So they're like, find this guy. They go ask around. Six people are like, yeah, we remember him. But he was close to the president of the club and he moved out of Malaga. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, as of 2023, there's no more information of Garbasio available to the public. Like, really? Nothing. Yeah. <gasps> now, unfortunately, they can't really go back and ask more questions to like the club members and all that stuff because yeah. the club no longer exists. So that's like mm -hmm. a big, just like, yeah. There. Uh, um, and most of the formal members are either dead or they're in their 80s. Oh my God. <laughs> because he was one of the few kids that was there. Everyone else was way much, like, much older than him. And now they're either dead or their 80s. Uh -huh. Yeah. But something good did come out of all this because um, in 2019, the case was reopened in October. Oh. oh, why was it reopened? I think it's because the brother and the reporter were coming up with so much more evidence that they maybe thought, or maybe the letter that was sent to the mom. Mm -hmm. Um, but this is also where, where I'm just like, what the fuck is happening here? So you remember <laughs> the drawing that Hema turned in as evidence? Yes. Okay, that exact same drawing shows up in her mailbox. Oh. So 30 uh, plus years after you gave that drawing to the cops because your friend went missing, it shows up in your mailbox. Yeah, that's kind of insane. And she knows that it's the original one because it includes the original ma uh, mark from the thumbtack where she like had it. Uh -huh. And it also has her handwriting in the back with the date that she received it from David. So it's not a copy. It's the actual original one she gave. Yeah. Her. Wow. Now, at this point, of course, Gemma, uh, Hema is a grown ass um, woman and she takes it upstairs and she tells her son um, and her son <laughs> immediately tells her that maybe the evidence was being destroyed. Maybe the case evidence was being destroyed, but someone wanted to get the drawing back to Hema. Uh, I don't I, I don't understand yeah it's just a theory that the kid had that her son had is like hey maybe they're actually destroying all the evidence but someone saw the picture and said hey let's give it back to the girl that gave it to us uh -huh. but that means that someone in the police department removed the evidence and returned it to Hema but there is no answer to this <laughs> and Dude, I don't, I don't get it. Dude, like, this is like why after all this time, and why that evidence specifically, and yeah, yeah. 
no, there's, it's just not making sense because there was no envelope. No one saw anyone place that there. She uh -uh. just checked it was there. And because it was, you know, evidence, that means someone in the police department removed it from evidence. Yes. Like, it's not easy to get evidence and then... No. Like, it was very, no. very intentional. Yeah. But, yeah. but why was it done? I don't know. Yeah. So now that she has the drawing back, uh, she reaches out to Jorge, George, um, the brother, and she shows it to him. Because, you know, he lived with him. Maybe the brother can tell who this man mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Um, uh, George, Jorge takes a look. Um, and because he's also, uh, he's also a painter himself, uh, and he's David's brother, he knows that this drawing is actually not of the Swiss man that the cops thought it was. Oh. Oh. Yeah, because this drawing had a thicker nose bridge, uh, and the Swiss man, uh, more, more, uh, thicker than the Swiss man's. And there, the crow feet were not similar to the Swiss man's at all. Oh my God, he like really paid attention to the detail. Yeah, that's some detail. <laughs> well, I mean, he would be comparing it, you know, that drawing to the yeah. picture of the Swiss man, and they're like, it's not the same man. This man has a th like a thicker bridge of the nose, and the, cr I mean, and yeah, no, it just comes to show you that George is a, you know, a painter himself. He knows all these little details. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um. They also found out as well that the Swiss man, the uh, Rudolf, um, he bought the house in Malaga three because they said he bought a house in Malaga. He actually bought the house three months after David went missing. So he didn't buy it before he went missing. He bought mm -hmm. it after three months he went missing. Um, in addition, remember how I said that uh, Rudolf had like a boat tied to like the dock? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it turns out that the boat wasn't of Rudolf. It was of his son. <laughs> and the son said that, you know, his dad, he didn't know how to boat. So yeah. the whole theory is that he left Malaga to go to Morocco were also false. Uh, there's so many, like, uh. like, I don't know. Like lies by omission and stuff yeah. mm -hmm. throughout the yeah. story. There, I mean, there were so many witnesses that just never really they took into consideration and things like that. Um, unfortunately, this is kind of where like I wrap it up for you guys uh, because the theory nowadays um, is that David did take the bus. He didn't mm -hmm. make it to the interview on time, so he gets sent home to he gets sent to the academy by the substitute teacher. And he walks up the stairs, but he doesn't make it to the class. And he knows yeah. that. But what happened on those stairs? Yes, it's what's driving <laughs> everyone crazy. Yeah. Uh, they were able, I was able to find some more information, but it was kind of like confusing the way that it was worded. Um, one of the ar um, articles that I read said that Rudolph, the Swiss man, he had a girlfriend who was blonde mm -hmm. and that she was a lot young, a lot more younger than Rudolph. Yeah. And some people thought that she was a Russian dance teacher on the first floor of the academy. Okay. But there's really no like evidence connecting that this art, you know, that this dance teacher was Rudolph's boy, uh, girlfriend. Yeah. Mm hmm. So it's just kind of one of those things that came out of nowhere. It's like, oh, she, he had a blonde girlfriend. Oh, there was a blonde teacher working there. But there's not really, like, evidence, evidence. Yeah. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, this is still an unsolved case. Um, and I just sent you a link so you can see his actual okay. artwork. So you can actually see the type of work that he did, which was freaking amazing for a 13-year-old kid. Um, if you scroll down, I think it's on page nine. That's where it starts. And the first thing you okay. see is a portrait. Oh. Whoa. Very talented. Yeah. And I'll put this on the website with the show notes so people can see them. He also draw his, he drew his dad. Oh, nice. Um, he drew Raul, his brother, as he was drawing. And then he has a few 
animals. And then he has some nude art in there as well. Well, what was Davi doing? <laughs> I mean, uh, it was probably like, um, he learned all those skills. Yeah, of course. Um, no, I'm looking through these. They're, these are really awesome. Yeah, yeah, and once again, you can see the Christ picture that he had at the yeah, yeah. So. Honestly, he was really talented for his time. And then cl- closer to the bottom, you can see where he was more into like the cartoonish types. Yeah. Yeah. Like he has like the Last Supper, but they're all like you would see in like a newspaper cartoon type of thing. <laughs> so that's kind of like what they didn't put, the brothers didn't put in his art gallery. They just took to the religious pictures. Michael Jackson in the thriller video. <laughs> 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 yeah. So that's the case of the boy painter of Malaga or El Niño Pintor de Malaga. Oh. Sorry, y'all. It's and an unsolved case. More questions than answers. Oh, I think <laughs> anyone that hears this episode, this case, and anyone that's done research in it is <sighs> just unsolved. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's like, why did it take so long for them to, like, open it back up, check out more evidence, and then they got so much? And... Which they could have used before. Yeah, Mm -hmm. one good thing did come out of this whole thing. Um, I actually didn't write it down. I kind of just dismissed it because there was a documentary done on David. Mm-hmm. Um, it's for it's free on YouTube. I watched it. Um, it's maybe like forty minutes, but it's about him. You know, his missing ca- him as a missing case, but it also talks about you know other missing case people, motivations behind people, yeah. things that could have happened. It was just a th- you know a video of theories and like this other people got kidnapped and but thanks to him, um, I don't know if it was the main reason. But or an inspirational case, um, a a foundation, an organization to find missing uh, people uh, started up. Mm-hmm. So That's something cool. did come out of it at the end, you know. Yeah, oh, okay. and I think I forgot the exact numbers. I don't want to kind of say it, but it said that by the it said by the time that you're done watching this um, documentary. Um, I think it was either four or six, four or six more kids are going to be um, reported as missing in Spain. Wow. Well, Which was just kind of like, ah, no, I'm already emotional over this case. No, seriously. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I, I don't just, just want to know. That. <laughs> Go okay. ahead. Thank you for sharing your case. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I actually don't know if the case is still open or if it was closed, but that was or could still be David. I I don't like you. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm kidding. But like I, I know, I, no, no. I want to know. I want to know. I know, and I knew that you guys were gonna feel that way because it's just unsolved. Yeah. <laughs> Unsolved cases are always the worst because yes, I don't know. I also didn't insane. want to leave with the fact that it was unsolved just because no, I, mean, yeah, I like it. I want to have the same emotions that I did. You know, like the yeah. hope and then the confusion. I wanted you guys to feel all of it. Yeah. Well, well I did. Yeah, I was going to be like, and I think you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that was good. All right. All right. Who's next? I wonder. Hi. <laughs> Are you guys ready for no the, the deepest, darkest no. paranormal story you'll ever hear? Yo, I don't well, know. Well, that's not what you're going to hear today. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, after after our last episode, I thought I would take a, a little bit of a break from. Anything uh, 
that would yeah. bring my mind into the void. So, <laughs> so yeah. honestly, I just kept a little bit more simple on my story today. It's probably not going to take all too long or all too long, really. Um, but I was trying to find like a good case just to, just to cover. Um, and it was actually cool when I saw this. Cause like, in a way, I guess you could say, uh, maybe it's a little bit of a stretch, but I almost have like somewhat of a connection to this story. Um, oh. it, it, it's, it's, it's really a stretch, but like, I feel like it's kind of cool. Um, mm-hmm. as it's, um, it's 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 about a uh, like a hotel a haunted hotel in Canada um which is funny because my last case was also in Canada but uh, <laughs> there's a pattern <laughs> so i guess like in uh, in 2022 i went on a couple trips to Canada um just to hang out with some friends i went to Alberta Canada uh, go off. Um, <laughs> Shut up. This is important, I swear. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, I, I I went there um and like so I was there or while I was there, um some of my friends and I we went to uh Banff National Park. It's like this huge national park that they have there. It is so beautiful, like one of the prettiest places I've ever seen in the world. Um and um so like Banff is like a town that's inside of that national park, and then there's other little like towns and hamlets that are there as well. Um oh. so we we went to what's called Lake Louise and it's this huge lake. It was really nice, but we were also there in March. So it was still like winter and it was Canadian winter. Um, and I definitely was not prepared for a Canadian winter whatsoever. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I, like I brought stuff or like layered, but I remember I was just like walking one day and it was like, like snow was blowing at me and I was like about to freeze to death. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I like the cold, but I don't think I'm built for that type of cold. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but yeah, we went to Lake Louise, um, in Banff national park and it was all frozen over and we like walked on the lake and everything. It was really nice. Um, but looking over the lake, there is this really old hotel. Um, and it's really cool. It's called the, the Fairmont Chateau Lake Louise Hotel. And did you and stay there? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, this is why it's a stretch that I kind no, of... No, no. You, 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 you saw it. <laughs> um, you were in the area. I was in the area. But you then were in the that, Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that the Fairmont Chateau Hotel has like a sister hotel called the Fairmont Banff Springs. And it's just like a, like a, a little bit of a ways away from the Fairmont Chateau. So they're like, they're sister hotels, essentially. Um, so yeah, the Fairmont uh, Banff Springs Hotel. Um, so after we like left Lake Louise, we went to the city of Banff, which was really close. And like, um, we got to walk through there and it was just so cool. It was like this nice little town um, that was, it was a bit touristy, but it wasn't like super developed or anything like, cause it was in the middle of like a national park and it was snowy and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. It was really fun, but like I was in Banff really. And that's where this, hotel is and that's my connection to it so i thought it was cool when i was um haunted or active did you know it was haunted or active at the time no not at all um and that's what actually like intrigued me by it that's what caught my eye because i was looking for cases and i was like wait i was like i've like seen that place (laughs) i was like i've i've been there Hmm. and that's really cool (laughs) um but yeah the um, the Fairmont Banff, Banff Springs, that's such a, <laughs> it's not a hard word to say, but it's, it's spelled B-A-N-F-F, but like, it's pronounced Banff. Yeah, I don't know. I can it's, see how that would get stuck in the tongue. Whatever. It's a, uh, so it's like, <laughs> it's like a historic hotel uh, in Banff in Canada. Um, it's, 
is like over 125 years old. Um, oh. It was opened in 1888 by the Canadian Pacific oh. Railway. Um, so it was like really like the biggest railway system that was going through Canada to transport primarily freight throughout the country. Mm -hmm. And so this hotel was basically, it started out pretty small. It started out as like, um, like a little wooden hotel that had space for 280 guests, but it of course grew to be a lot bigger, but it event, it originally was just put in to be like, um, just a nice little hotel for people who were passing through on that railway to stay if they needed to do so. Yeah, fair. Um, so yeah, it's so now it's in like the resort town of Banff and everything. Um, but there are a few different sort of ghost sightings, a lot, uh, popular ghost sightings and stories that they have there. Like I said, none of them are really like super serious or deep or anything like that. I just think it's kind of fun. Is it like um, here's someone flush the toilet? <laughs> a little bit more than that a little bit more than that okay but, okay um <laughs> on the <same> track? yeah it's, <laughs> <clears throat> it, it's between flushing a toilet and things getting thrown around <laughs> it is between flushing a toilet and like m m family murder you know like somewhere oh, okay. oh. yeah <laughs> just where we wanted <laughs> <laughs> i think that's a pretty good range yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's also called like the Castle of the Rockies, also, which Ooh. I think is a really cool name. Um, I actually like that name. If you're like, yeah. hey, let's go to Canada and stay at the Castle of the Rockies, I'm like, hell yeah, that's so I'm sick, right? Gonna use that as a band name, Castle of the Rockies. You'll probably get yeah. sued. No, I no, haven't no. taken the right. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you're gonna be like, how do you confuse a hotel with a rock band? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Sorry, bro. Okay. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I guess the f there's, yeah, there's a couple different like primary ghosts that are seen there. Um, the first one is the bellman or like the bellhop. Um, so um, the, maybe one of the, you know, the most popular stories is that there was a man named Sam McCauley, who was one of the original, um, bellmen back at uh, working at the hotel in the sixties, seventies, somewhere around there. So he was like the head bellman. Um, he eventually passed away and not much is really known about like how he died. Um, but of course, you know, he's still seen to be around uh the hotel to this day um so sam was described as such a friendly kind person he was always ready to help um and he really just loved his job being able there being there to be able to help people so um a lot of times you know he'll be witnessed like carrying people's bags or opening up their doors or walking them to their rooms um especially up on like the ninth floor of the hotel um Apparently, though, he'll, like, vanish if you actually try to talk with him or, like, tip him at all, which, you know, Wait, stand up so guy. Can you yeah. imagine yeah. that? You're, like, taking the elevator with the bellman. He's carrying your luggage. The elevator door is open, and you're like, oh, this is our floor. You turn around, and, like, your bags are there. Like, no one's there to help you anymore. <laughs> you have to carry them the rest of the way. <laughs> I would be freaked out, but also, like, oh, like... Cool, actually. Yeah. I don't know, stand-up guy. <laughs> Until you talk to him. But yeah, he's been seen to be like in his like 60s uniform, um, you know, turning on lights, helping out around the thing. But um, so Sam McCauley, he was like, you know, an old Scotsman <laughs> who uh who was working there. Um but I think like one of the biggest or one of like the most prominent stories of Sam and him helping is there was one day when uh, two like elderly women who were uh, staying at the hotel, they went to the front desk to get some assistance because they like their key to their room wasn't working. There was some malfunction or something like that. Um, but the, the like the regular bellman, the alive bellman who was <laughs> working. Let's uh, clarify that. <laughs> <laughs> he was busy and so he, he couldn't respond. He didn't respond for a while. Eventually the two older women they got kind of 
impatient and they yeah. headed back to their room. Um, so, but once they got to their room, a one of the bellmen like joined them um, and managed to unlock their door for them, let them inside the room. They were really grateful. Um, that bellman leaves. Um, <laughs> and the other bellman the alive bellman he comes up and he's like sorry i'm so sorry like i can finally come help you what do you need help with and the two ladies are like oh like one of your other bellmen actually already helped us and he unlocked the door but um he knew that all of his people were busy and nobody could have helped them yet so he was like um can you describe this person who helped you and Mm -hmm. basically the lady said that like or basically what they described was the exact like description of sam mccauley um and so yeah like that's not I know, nothing too special but i just think it's really fun that there's yeah. this really who's just there to help people i like it <laughs> me too working there so much that he's still working there to this day <laughs> me at work <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um but yeah he seemed to be seen up on like the you know like sixth seventh and ninth floors of the house especially um lots of cold spots up there um and he'll actually even like he's been seen haunting his old office which is now turned into like a guest room on oh that that would be scary i was gonna ask you like is it still an office or does someone slip there now (laughs) yeah it's like a guest room um Honestly, I'd be fine with like Sam chilling in my room. I, I was going to say the same. I was like, if all he does is his work, I'd be okay with that room. <laughs> if you request it, that would be the thing. I would. Yeah. So there's another ghost story, though, another popular one. Um, so Sam, the bellman, and this one I'm about to say are really like tied for like the most popular stories. Um, but it's the, the ghost. The ghost bride or the burning ghost bride who's actually there. Hold um, on. <laughs> what do you mean they're tied if this one's burning and the other one will help you with your suit face? Hey, that's why I said there was a pretty big range here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, apparently there's um like the story of of a ghost bride that story dates back to like the late 1920s even so it's a pretty old story or at least it's said to you know be dating back to that time um so the story kind of goes that um there was a young couple that was to be married at the hotel one day um so you know they were happy they were getting ready the bride had her beautiful gown on um and she was, you know, she was looking great. She was ready to go get married. Um, she starts to make her way over and she has to go down, you know, one of the hotel's like big marble staircases. Um, but there's sort of two tellings of how it went is that um, while she, you know, made her way down the stairs, something like startled her. She jumped and she slipped, fell and broke her neck <laughs> immediately. Um and that's Wait. very sad. <laughs> so why is she on fire? That's another one. So there's sort of like uh, two ways it's kind of told. Mainly this one that, was, that I'm about oh, to Oh, so like there's about two like, popular tells of, of yes. the ghost. Okay. So, yeah. So the general thing is like she slipped and fell down the stairs. And that's how she did die. Um, but... Some people say that, like, there were, you know, there were candles at the opening of the staircase. And so her dress caught fire and she panicked. And so she started trying to put it out furiously because she didn't want her dress to be on fire. Um, (laughs) But all she was, you know, doing that, that's when she slipped and fell. And so, um, you know, she, she brushed up against that the candle's flame and eventually she you know tumbled down the stairs while she was burning and um uh, and that's really how it goes so she did end up like passing away on those steps um but like since 
then i guess uh, like a lot of the hotel staff and the guests they they see like a veiled figure a veiled woman um moving up and down the stairs or they see her in her wedding dress dancing in the ballroom that's upstairs um okay and it's actually it's a little bit sad to think about though because like she's dancing in the ballroom waiting for for the her dance room. with her husband that she never got to have oh that's kind of sad. I was going to say I would prefer to see her in the ballroom, but now I don't know. <laughs> she's dancing alone, and she's she's waiting for her husband. Yeah. <laughs> um, so those are, like, two of the biggest stories. Of course, there's also, you know, other little things that people report happening, like, I don't know, pillowcases being pulled out from under them while they're sleeping, or um, seeing no. other apparitions. Let me sleep in peace. <laughs> If I'm awake, you I can love... do whatever you want. Just let me sleep in peace. <laughs> I love how you like started it off by saying like nothing too like crazy, you know. Just but this bride caught fire. Yeah. Okay, but you also have to put into the context that my last case was. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's a okay. Lot worse. So. Yeah. This yeah, time we don't true. even know if she actually caught fire or not. Exactly. Yeah. You know. Okay. Um, <laughs> sometimes um people will see that like uh, a ghost of like a bartender will be seen and when when people have been drinking too much and that bartender will like shoo them off and tell them to go back to the room and go to bed i like or... that <laughs> um yeah i think that's pretty fun as well yeah um but also there are some like more like particularly i guess haunted rooms of which um so particularly like a room 873 is is what it's said to be um so this is kind of where the 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 family murder comes in what <laughs> um, yeah i i wasn't joking when i did say that <laughs> um but yeah in room 873 it's said to be one of like the most haunted rooms of that hotel um and reportedly it was where like the the murder of a family did happen um <clears throat> so um it said that like uh, a family was staying there for like a weekend getaway or something like that um the husband and wife, uh, two kids, I believe. Um, but the, the husband and the wife, they had a big argument. So the husband, he went down to the bar, got drunk. Um, he went into the kitchen, grabbed the knife, and yeah, and he, he went no. into the room. So that's how the story is said to be. And so um, now guests and staff have reported seeing um you know figures outside of the room or even inside the room hearing knocks and sounds and things like that um actually that room has been um apparently like its door has been sort of like like closed up and so the room is closed and it's sort of just trying to made to be blended into the wall so it doesn't draw as much attention um, are you trying so like there's like it's a sealed room type of thing? Yeah, so almost like it's sort of like a like a hidden kind of secret room or like like that doesn't exist. Got because it. Like they if you just were to like tear down the wallpaper, you'd find the door. Yeah, exactly. Got Something it. like okay. that. Um yeah. So there are these things. Um actually going back to the 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 bride as well, like it's actually it became popular enough of a story that um there was a like special edition the bride uh coin that was minted and pressed by like Wait. the king and a stamp as well which i think is pretty cool that um, is pretty cool canada has really cool like anniversary and special edition coins we have weird coins we have really weird coins yeah canada has really cool money though i don't know i like it <laughs> america catch up they won't <laughs> serious well, Canadian, I, I, money is like, Canadian money is like plastic, sort of. So, like, it doesn't get wet. You can't tear it. I don't know. It's, it's yeah, colorful. Yeah, I was actually just looking through my Mexican pesos because I have some in my wallet. And I just realized for the first time, I know that there were different colors and all that stuff, but they're also different sizes. Oh, really? 
like oh. lengthwise. A few of them are a little le- lo- longer. A few of them, are, their like length is a little shorter. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. That is actually really cool. Makes it easier Ours to kind of like standard. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> tell us more about the, so... the community money. <laughs> 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 so yeah the burning bride um but the thing is when i was like researching some of this stuff um i i came across a reddit post and it's like oh was the fairmont banff Bamp springs hotel actually haunted um and so i was reading through like a really big comment um from someone who used to work there they said uh um, quote so i used to be a part of the ghost tours we did at the springs in at october and quotes so like apparently they were part of the actual ghost tours um and this comment was left three years ago on this post um uh-huh. they will do them so, sorry <laughs> do they still do them you still do ghost tours i'm not actually sure i don't i don't think they Jay do wants to go on one I know. <laughs> that would be fun i'd be down it would. <laughs> um but yeah they said uh they said we used to dress up as the ghost bride and sam the bellman for the fun little tour for guests <laughs> um which is a cool little thing um <laughs> but uh essentially the the recap left by this person the tldr too long didn't read is that all of these ghost stories are made up by previous staff of the hotel. And honestly, I, yeah, like I, that makes sense. Um, yeah. I would so, start it though, or like, yeah. Started it. yeah. So the commenter actually does go into a little bit of detail about that. Um, I can send you guys the link actually, but I'll, I'll keep, like, actually, I'll go over some of the points. Yeah. Um, So he says that Sam the Bellman actually does is based off of like a, a real person named Sam McCauley who used to work there, um, worked there for 20 years. Um, but he said that the ghost story was made up by um, an, like a, a different head of the, the Bellman and the Bell Desk, a, a guy named David Moberg. Um, but he said that it was made up and it became a joke in their department. Um, so it became a joke. In the department, when a bag went to a room and you couldn't find who did it, you just said it was Sam. So apparently they just like Uh-oh. named all of these random things on Sam the Bellman. And that's kind uh-huh. of how that ghost story kind of started. Um, that's not a bad origin yeah. story if if that's actually what happened. Yeah. Um, so part of the comment is, quote, there have been reports of him appearing in the spa suites rooms uh 1052 to 1054 and guests see him at the foot of the bed this is not possible as the spa suites were only added to the hotel in 1992 decades after the real sam worked at the hotel Ha-ha. so but yeah i have a big, uh, <laughs> but not physically um <laughs> what if it's like an intelligent haunting and it's aware of its surroundings and just goes into other rooms that is true like, because. just because the rumors weren't there before doesn't mean he can't be in them now. Exactly, because if he's helping people out with, like, luggage, that has to be an intelligent haunting. Mm-hmm. It's so weird exactly. of the surroundings and does interact with the living. Exactly. Anyway, um, that's just he goes on to talk a little bit more about He goes on to talk about the ghost bride. Um, he recaps that, like, um, you know... The he recaps the story of like young lady who is to be wed and she falls down the stairs and she you know, catches fire and dies. Um, but they said that, um, the they found out the origins from like the old vice president of the hospital or the hospital, the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> um, of the hotel so he said that like the story was created by one of his old colleagues back in 1986 um because they were all the group of them they all had a challenge to see who could create the best ghost story and so that's oh. when 
Burning Ghost Bride was created and it's like stuck. So um, they say that there's no actual historical record of this death and nobody actually can confirm like what decade had happened in or when it happened. Um, but they said it's still like a fun like story that they like to tell. I mean, so. if that's true, whoever came up with that story must be really proud that it's still around. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that would actually be so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Could you imagine, and, like, their deathbed? They're like, I made up this story. It's not true at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be really cool. <laughs> um, and then I also touch on the Room 873, though the commenter said it's Room 875, but every other recount online is Room 873, so I'm just going to say that it was like a typo or something. But um, yeah. roommate 73 is how I'll refer to it as. Um, but they said like how apparently like it is sort of like a missing room that they've, you know, closed up uh, because of the the murder that happened in there. Um, but the, the commenter actually says, quote, I know this one is a lie because I made it up. <laughs> no one has ever been murdered at the Pamp Springs Hotel. End quote. <laughs> I, I was like that really funny <laughs> i like how he's like i actually made it up gotcha i'm supporting this i was just like honestly cool like have fun with it i don't know yeah no murder um, was dead no. he says that like apparently like it's sort of like the missing room type of thing it's because it originally was two rooms but then they like there was two rooms there, but then they like broke off the connecting wall and just expanded it into one bigger room. Ah, um, so of course they would cover the you know where the door was. Exactly, there wasn't a need for a second door, um, which is right there. Um, that but, makes sense. Yeah, That's kind of like the logical thing. Yeah, um, but the the commenter actually says that like that where that second extra door is is actually right where the head of the bed in the room is so like guests they'll get complaints or like people or guests will like wake up upset because people were knocking like on the wall right next to them i don't know just kind of funny no that is, oh <laughs> could you imagine being that person though <laughs> you pay so much money to get this room and to get woken up in the middle of the night like multiple times <laughs> i mean but i do think that if you bought that room knowing that it was it quote unquote haunted. I That's think you'll be fine getting woken up in the middle of the night. That's true. <laughs> Until you find out uh, that there's someone next door. Um, a little bit further down in the thread, uh, in the Reddit thread, there was a person, another person who said they worked nights there, um, and they said like, quote, the popular stories are not true, but I believe that there is activity there. End quote. Um. And it's like, I feel like you could say that for lots of places. And I honestly yeah. would believe that, that maybe those stories aren't actually true, but there is still some activity there nonetheless. So it would still, it's still pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Plus, I mean, I would imagine if you're going there and wanting to stay in those rooms, you have in your mind the possibility that it could all be fake. Yeah. So you, like, I wouldn't think that someone would be too upset that nothing happened. They go downstairs and be like, I don't want my money back. There was no haunting. <laughs> it's like I there was no go. guarantee that there would be. I would love to go as well. I want to go so that I, they can tell me the story. <laughs> <laughs> There's another comment that I was just reading right now. Um, or I was just, yeah. And so this guy, he says, quote, I was doing drywall work at Fairmont Banff about 12 years ago. We heard several unexplained phenomena at our time. Tales of the massive shadow wolf that can be found outside on the outskirts of the golf course during a full moon. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I said, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you know what audio we need right now? What? One of that child that sees the wolf and can I pet that dog? Can I pet that dog? <laughs> can I pet that dog? <laughs> can I pet that dog? 
good. Dude, that's, that's the best that's ever going to come from this podcast. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Anyway, that that's, so that's the Fairmont so, Damp Springs Hotel. <laughs> okay, but, but I want to know more about the wolf. Like, have other people seen it? Or is it just kind of like, it might be true, it might not? Oh, uh, I think it's just a fake story that they. Yeah, did. no. So there was um some that someone responded to it. It's actually the commenter from the the, the very first one I talked about who said like mm-hmm. they did the ghost tours and debunked yeah. all this stuff. Um, they said I'm going to have to call you out on this one. I'm afraid I haven't heard of a single one of these claims, and they are far too de- detailed for one. And the lipstick mirror is straight out of RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> <laughs> There had only been one hidden room found after the fire in the original hotel, which is very tenuous, and I couldn't find any evidence of it, though. Oh, oh yeah, something I forgot to mention is that, like, there was a hidden room that was found from the original hotel. Um, it was only found because that part of the hotel, like, caught fire. And so, um, and and so, yeah, I, I guess the story goes is that, like, the builders, they had a really big error when they were making it so they built a room with no windows or doors but they didn't tell anyone and they just and they just covered up just covered it. <laughs> honestly yeah. if they got to go I, it sounds like they got away with it yeah it sounds like they yeah. did wow cool i like that yeah. well, we should well, make a reservation i'd send a fucking should, list now <laughs> Canada, are you listening? We're coming your way. When? <laughs> don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Dude, these hotels are like like bo- booked though. Apparently, you have to make reservations so far in advance. Oh, like a, like a so. year, huh? Yeah, just gonna have to yeah if you're trying to stay there like during the summer, yeah, you have to make it like a year in advance, which is okay. crazy. Wow. Is he insane. Time to start saving. <laughs> Do you know donate. like lots of prices? <laughs> uh, let me look it up really quick. Because I'm just curious. I was like, it might be super crazy, or it might just be like, you know what? No, it sounds fair for like a fancy looking hotel at this location. Let's see. Check rates. I like One how you just had it ready your next to go. iconic stay. What? I like it. I like how you just had it ready to go. Well, I, I just looked it up really quick. Okay. <laughs> um, Fairmont One King is 665 Canadian a night, but Fairmont Yo. View is 955 Canadian a night. Yo! Like, like oh, damn, there's a whole, like, suite, and that's 4,000 Canadian a night, which is... Um... Yeah, in that hotel. Would you like us to come into the hotel and cover it in detail? <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> we would. <clears throat> we, we would love a. We would love a room. <clears throat> Let us roam the halls and investigate. <laughs> uh, what they Please. said. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I like anyway. how you were just like what they said. <laughs> yeah. I agree. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Same. Well, thank you. Now, awesome. We really thank do you, have to. Thank you. Up. Thank you. We do. I oh, know that'd be so sick. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, it's my turn. Uh, I also have like, I, like I don't know. I I could probably send you guys them later, show you them later. But like, I have pictures of of when I was there and walking through the town on the lake and stuff. So um, yeah. just get sort of like an idea of what the area looks like. So. I do feel it. picture. Well, you were there when it was like snowy, and I was picturing. I was like, there when it was snowy, yeah. greenery, but now I'm picturing lots of snow. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. That's cool. Should send, show them later. Yeah. All right, Alexis, Alexis, you're ready to wrap this up. Like a Christmas I got the gift? mystery ink story. Oh I, my gosh! <laughs> not actually mystery. Ink, my fault. Um, <laughs> I have the mystery story. Is what I meant to say. Okay. Um, and you guys know me by now. What's where's the one place I always want to go to? Oh, Romania. 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 So guess what? <laughs> oh going God. to Romania. Oh going God. to Romania. Specifically, Transylvania. No Ooh. way. Vampires. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Ra. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> this takes place in okay, I'm going to butcher every single name. <laughs> so just prepare for that. And then I, I also don't have a whole lot of information. I've tried my darndest to dig into this more, but it is more based on legends and folklore more than anything. Mm, and okay. uh, so I want to put that out there. So not many historical facts for me to actually have. Okay. What are you telling us a story of that pebble that talk? I am telling <laughs> I am telling you the story of the Hoya Basiu Forest <laughs> located in Transylvania, Romania. It is known mainly for its paranormal activity, um, has a very eerie reputation, uh, but a lot of people know it as the Bermuda Triangle. Uh, Romania. Oh, oh. Yeah. I didn't know Romania, Romania had it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know they would show like that. So I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that if there are warning signs to stay out. So if you can so... accidentally wander in mm-hmm. there, I think that's a little bit more okay. dangerous. I, I probably should say this too. <laughs> um, it's a very beautiful tourist place that you can go to. So don't be scared if you're in Romania or if you want to go to Romania. Feel free to go. It's a beautiful place. Uh, just maybe don't go too deep. Um, you mean, don't go into the woods. Well, it's a forest. You know. But it's a forest. I like forests. I love forests. <laughs> My name's Forest. No, your, <laughs> your name is not Forest. It's his middle name. <laughs> His middle name is Joseph. Hey, stop doxing me. Hey. <laughs> My fault. His middle name is Josue. <laughs> Forest woman. Forest. Okay. Okay, okay. Back on track. <clears throat> so Did a lot leave? of a lot of visitors um have reported feeling very like intense emotions in a way a lot of people have reported severe anxiety and nausea but there's also been a lot of ufo and ghost sightings yeah so that's pretty cool um but but like i said really all based on legends and folklore this is like all coming from like locals so it's it, it does go pretty far back in time I will admit that goes back to the 1920s is where the first incident had happened. But it is mainly just stories that they would tell during that time. So Mm -hmm. there are many different occurrences that happen. One of the main things that caught my eye and like is the thing that it's most popular for is its vegetation. So. What makes there it is unique in the forest there are almost like nearly perfect circles of just nothing like no cool. no grass no flowers oh uh, okay nothing grew. We tried to grow stuff there but like nothing has worked and then they had scientists go into the forest, take some tests on the soil, see if it's like radioactive or anything, and everything was clear. Everything's all in healthy, good. That's kind of insane. Wrong. Yeah. So like, mm-hmm. there's no actual reason for it to be like this. So that was another thing that caught my eye. It's also known for its trees. So, Whoa, you guys... a forest is known for its trees. <laughs> no, <they're... laughs> because I this is why I hate you. This is why I hate you. But their trees are twisted. They're they literally curve in from the roots, and they're like. Wait, like, I think weird. I've seen pictures. Do they look kind of oh, like well. a like a owlish? Do you have a picture you could send? I do have a picture I could send. This one is pretty. 
Pretty I good. Forget. I think I have, but I might be confusing it with somewhere else. There's a lot of different trees, to be honest, that are weird. Um, but the one that stands out are the um, the curved ones. Yes. Hey, some people so like they curvy basically. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You heard me. <laughs> some people like curvy trees. So true. How do I send the picture? You copy it and then you paste it. That's so true. Okay. <laughs> but it's it's a pretty common thing that they see through the forest. Uh, visitors that go there, they notice that the trees literally curve in from the root, which is really weird to me. I sent it to you and it should have gone through. Yeah, no. I had a nuts what? baby. Let me see. Oh. Huh? Oh, what sick. What if you got it? Yeah, like how, it's pretty cool. I'm reading like the URL type of thing. It says most haunted forest. <laughs> a forest yeah, it's... world most haunted forest. <laughs> Dude, those are sick trees. <laughs> no, they're really cool. Um, Some of them kind of look like claws. Really eerie. Too, but, yeah. Which is, yeah. But, I told you, some people like curvy trees, like Kai. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> um, we're going to talk about the experiences that visitors have had here. Um, so one of the most popular kind of like, again, it's one of the most, not the most, but spirit sightings is, or disappearances that have happened there, is the uh, disappearing shepherd. So. Question. This one goes back in the 1920s. What's your question? Uh, did the sheep also disappear? Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so, no like this. Go ahead. Yeah, it, it's, it's a short little thing. Um, in the 1920s, a shepherd was walking through into the forest along with his flock of about 200 sheep. Um, and they went into the forest, but they had never got out. And to the state, they still have never been found. So, of course, but that was something that really caught my eye. There's also the ghost girl. The ghost girl is also another paranormal sighting that people have had that it's just this little girl that walks through the trees, um, especially mm-hmm. when it's really dark. Yeah. She's just like me for real. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you okay? Like I, I said, like, I like the trees. Unfortunately, I couldn't, like, find out too much about, like, the shepherd as well as the girl, because, like I said, this is all based on legend, so there's no, like, historical records of anything, really. But there was also a lot of visitors that have reported, like, unexplained lights and uh, UFO sightings. They'll see little flying objects, is what they call them, in the sky, Um, They're, like, often either flying through the trees or hovering over them. So you can, like, clearly see them. And then they're, yeah, it's pretty insane. I don't don't know if I believe. Me and my drones. You and your (laughs) people. Yeah, those are all of my drones, my fault. I've never. Yeah, and I was thinking, drone. why is Romania so far away? I want to see the lights, but I guess I use <laughs> yeah. the drones. Oh, I'm no. like, oh, so that's what they the are. Trees? Can we please go to Romania? Oh, my God. <laughs> no, we'll probably get like killed. I don't know. Why? <laughs> well, <laughs> whoa, that took a turn. <laughs> <laughs> let's take a different turn. So there's um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also... Let's let's actually go ahead. Uh, there's also a lot of so a lot of YouTubers go there, of course. There's, I was actually trying to do more research on this forest, and I was, like, going through different podcasts. I was trying to watch different YouTube videos, the longest ones that I could find, just so I could find the more information. But um, in a lot of the YouTube videos that I had at least watched, I noticed that, that they had a lot of technical like difficulties throughout them and I just thought you know like oh, okay probably something that happens and when I was doing more research on it I did find out that 
a lot of people have reported their cameras dying or their GPS systems even not working at times, which is pretty scary to me. I don't know. You, if I can't... You said, sorry to cut you off. No, you're fine. Go on. Yeah, you said like they did like radiation testing and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. Was, and like, everything came back good. And I was like, did you just like <laughs> fall out Chernobyl or like... <laughs> No, they're good. They have like, okay, they're not like amazing. They have like a normal rate of radiation or not a normal rate, but. I mean, maybe they just got like a really big dose of it back in the day. And then that it made the trees go all like windy and it caused the stuff <laughs> in the ground. But then like now it's just kind of fine. That's how the trees have always been from what I've seen. Yeah, but is it because of the, the radiation? <clears throat> Maybe. I guess we'll never know. <laughs> but continue. But okay, yeah, <laughs> level, I don't think it would really affect them, would it? No, I don't think it would. No. Maybe. But there was a, another one of a biologist named Alexandru Sift. Um, he had actually went into the forest while conducting research. He was actually trying to research the the soil, little plots of nothing within the forest. Um, but as he was going to conduct the research, it went very long where nobody had heard anything from him and he had disappeared. No trace of anything. No trace so, of him really even going in. Do they have like a search party or something? No. They just, he disappeared and they're like, that's another one? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, considering that, considering that, like, I mean, if I was a part of a search party and I noticed that people going into the forest, just walking through, minding their own business or disappearing and never coming back. Yeah. I probably wouldn't want to, I don't know, go in there. This is why there needs to be signs. Because <laughs> I honestly would walk through that forest because if the trees are just cool looking. Oh, yeah, for sure. But if there's no warning telling me you might go missing. I would... Yeah. Well, everybody knows about the forest now, so. Everyone's a lot of people. Everyone is a lot of people. You, you know sure? why everyone knows about the forest now? Because I'm telling them about the forest now. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> um, and then there was another little... Not little, but like another kind of disappearance that had happened there. It was actually a group of five. Um, and this had happened in the late 1970s, which in my opinion is kind of like somewhat recent. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah, right? Okay. So yeah, it, it was just a group of five hikers and they had entered through the forest. Uh, of course, they were just five friends going on a normal hike. So they thought, but they never came back. So there's been a lot of disappearances within the forest. No knowledge of who these people were. No knowledge of if they ever came back or if they have families. Nothing. I've tried to do my hardest to research more on the people that had disappeared. People who had maybe passed away. But there's really no record of anything. Almost as if they were never there. Maybe. Oh my god! <clears throat> but it makes me want to go to Romania. I kind of want to see. I want to see this. This forest. is why I said we would die if we go. There. <laughs> <laughs> I would um, love to see this forest. No, that's like crazy though. Just like no record of anything. No happened. record, and I, I was like, no, there has to be something. There's something that I'm missing. There's something that I'm not like looking deep into enough. So that's yeah. when I started like looking into other people's videos because I figured, okay, they probably know more than I do. Um, but <laughs> they don't. They, <laughs> had this, they had the same in information that I did. <laughs> so that <clears throat> very short little story, but that is the sh story of the Boya Basio forest in Romania. I, do you guys know the game Dead by Daylight? Yes. Yeah. Do you know, like, the killer, the Huntress? Yes. Um, 
<clears throat> I don't know. Like the story kind of reminds me of like her backstory. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Oh. It's like, it's like you know, she like grew up like in a forest and like this really dark, eerie forest, and like people would disappear, and then she became like the the like killer the monster in the forest because like her mom died and she started like making people disappear from the forest itself i don't know it just kind of reminded me of that it was funny okay I... we should play dead by daylight then <laughs> i'm down we should <laughs> we should wait okay i do have dead by daylight um i'm saying we could play <laughs> okay we should play uh, minecraft too yo listeners if you want to see us play dead by daylight and Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, and Minecraft. <laughs> Chamber of the Vehicle Gaming. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we'll call it, when it's like horror games, we should call it like... Gamers of the Occult. <laughs> Gamers oh. of the Occult. That's actually... <laughs> scared no, to play. I know, creative. Scared to play because I can't do horror games, even though I love them. <laughs> I love... Honestly, same. Yeah, I... Yeah, I get really scared of horror games. <laughs> and if I was playing with, like, y'all, I think I'd be a little bit more comfortable, even though I would still be scared. We should play Phasmophobia. I'm so down. How about we I'm... do them all? Yeah. Okay, let's do them all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So in that uh... case, uh, listeners, just let us know what you want us to start with. <laughs> and any other suggestions? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Actually, um... About suggestions, we, we got another submission for stories. Oh, did we? Yeah, so thank you. It was anonymous. So, um, anonymous, if you made it to episode three, uh, we got your suggestions. Thank you. And eventually we'll cover them, hopefully, sooner thank rather you than later. Very, very much. Yeah, they thank sent three you. stories and they said this are, are not for the faint of heart. So, okay, get uh, ready. I'll we'll check them out. Yeah, yeah, cool. We'll give Anonymous a shout out now and whenever we see the stories. If you want to include your name next time, Anonymous, you can. <laughs> we will shoot shoot you. We'll shout you out. Um, Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get shot maybe, by. maybe that's why they kept themselves anonymous. <laughs> yeah. Better be safe. Sorry. Anyway. Thank you for sharing. Anyway, that was a fun little story. Um, any listeners, just uh, email me my ticket to Romania, and uh, I'll send you. Yeah. If anyone wants to come steps. to us, the the Banff Hotel. Um, yeah, yeah. Email us that yeah, yeah. A ticket to the Banff Hotel. Actually, that's the closer to us. Um, actually, waiting. the owners, like Fairmont, if you see this, um, I will beg. So. Um, <laughs> Romania. Let us know. I love you. What? Oh my God, Josh Hutcherson. All right. Nope. I knew it was coming. And the and the, <laughs> and, the and that's the end. <laughs> Thank I you for listening, you. everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank we'll you. see you in two weeks. Yeah. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye bye.